Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be talking about everything I used up in 2018. I have a year's worth of empties to talk about. I did one of these videos last January, I believe. I will have it in a card right here if you guys want to go check it out. And now it is February of 2019 and I've accumulated a lot, a lot of stuff. I thought it would be fun just to save literally every single thing that I used up, of course, beauty and makeup related, skincare, hair care, things like that, just to talk to you guys about the product show you guys what I have multiples of, meaning it'll show you guys what I really love, what I go through often, a lot of my Holy Grail products you guys are going to see a bunch of in this bag that I have behind me, but I thought it would be fun. I'll let you guys know if I would repurchase the products, if I have already repurchased them and all of those things. I have a lot of stuff accumulated that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. So if you're interested in hearing all about my beauty trash, make sure to keep on watching. This is the bag right here that I've been keeping all of my empties in. It's just a little Catrice shopping bag that I got at BeautyCon last year, but I don't know if you guys can see, this is pretty full. I'm probably gonna drop something if I keep doing that, but I'm not gonna go in any particular order. Just gonna kind of reach in, pull something out. If I know something has a duplicate, I will try to either let you guys know or show you both of the products just so I don't talk about the same thing twice. So let's just get into our first item. Okay, so the first product that I went ahead and pulled out of the bag is this Nivea Essentially Enriched Body Lotion with Almond Oil. I have gone through more than one of these so far. It's so good. So this is for dry to very dry skin. If you see here on the actual Nivea bottle, this is the most rich form of this lotion that you can get. So this is formulated for very dry skin. This feels and smells amazing. You guys know I've mentioned on my channel before, I do have very sensitive skin, especially when it comes to scent. This is so lightly scented. It doesn't bother me at all. This doesn't break me out. This really just moisturizes so well, especially in the winter I don't moisturize a lot in the summer not really my thing maybe after I shave my legs or something like that but after every single shower I take during the winter time I slather my whole body in this I don't put this on my face I'll get into something else in a little while my favorite face lotion but for the body the elbows the knees literally everywhere this is so good and really nourishing so if you have really dry skin I definitely recommend checking this out for the body speaking of face lotion I finished up my CeraVe moisturizing cream this is all I've been using on my face for probably a year, a year and a half now. This is so gentle on the skin while being really heavily moisturizing. You also can use this on your body, but again, this is for normal to dry skin. It moisturizes, restores, and maintains protective skin barrier. And what I really loved about this, it is accepted by the National Eczema Organization or Association, the National Eczema Association. It has that little stamp on there. I suffer from very, very bad eczema. I literally get it all over my body, on my face to the point where my eyes are so swollen. They barely open. It's just a really bad situation. So anything that's accepted by this National Eczema Association, it just makes me feel a little bit better putting it on my skin. When it comes to lotions that I feel comfortable putting on my face and really putting on my skin, I always say that the more plain and boring, the better. I do not like scents. I don't like stuff that's infused with a bunch of different ingredients. I really just like a plain old lotion. This is a little bit heavy, but I wouldn't say it feels like it's weighing my skin down. I put a lot of this on at night and it's absolutely fine. It's not greasy. In the morning though, when I do put this on, I do feel like I have to go just a little bit lighter with it so it's not super heavy on the skin or under my makeup. Other than that, for someone who is like combo skin type, but it's also very, very sensitive, this has been really great and I've had no issues with it. The next product that I used up is the Sephora Mud Mask, the purifying and mattifying. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get through this whole product, but once this gets to the end, it just dries out really bad and it's like rock hard. I cannot get any product out of there to put on my face. It is really, really hard and just dry at this point. But I do like this mask. I definitely think if you are very, very oily, you will enjoy this mask because it is kind of one of those masks that when you take it off, you feel like it really sucked the life out of your face. I guess that's the best way that I can personally describe it. My oily girls are going to love this. If you are someone like me who has more combo skin where sometimes I'm oily, sometimes I'm dry, this is not something that I would use in the winter just because it will dry out your skin even more. I do find myself using this a little bit more in the summer when I am more oily, when I feel like my skin is a little bit more like gunked up and dirty, I guess you could say. I use this more as like a purifying method and I 
only focus this on the center of my face. So my forehead, my nose, and my chin. Or my other favorite way to use this is actually as a spot treatment. So if I get a pimple or something, I'll just kind of put it on. And it is so intense. I really feel like it dries up the pimple. Doesn't get rid of it right away, but it gets rid of if it's like inflamed or if it's making the area around the pimple really oily. I really like this mask. I originally purchased this because I wanted the Glam Glow Super Mud and I found that this is just the exact same thing after trying both of them and this is a lot cheaper. This whole thing is $20 and I find that Sephora has really, really great skincare. Also a quick side note, I didn't finish that product up but if you guys are really dry and wanna try out Sephora skincare, definitely check out their hydrating gel mask. It is so amazing and cooling and adds so much moisture into the skin. It definitely feels like a jelly type cooling water. So if you are more dry, I recommend that one. If you are combo like me, you could definitely use both of the masks like depending on how your skin is acting that day or that week or whatever. Sticking on the skincare theme, I have my absolute favorite product of all time and this is the Thayer's Witch Hazel Aloe Vera Formula Alcohol Free Toner with Rose Petal. It's a mouthful you guys, but I swear this absolutely saved my skin. I talk about this a lot on my channel for very, very good reason. This does not have alcohol in it, so it's not going to dry out the skin by any means. I found that even when I was oily and when I did have acne, despite this not having alcohol, this really cleared up my skin. It made such a difference in the liveliness of my skin and the evenness in my complexion. I don't know what is in this stuff. It says natural remedies. It is absolutely incredible. I'll read you guys some of the ingredients that are in here. So it's purified water. <laughs> okay, I'll read you the other one that I have. So this is purified water, aloe leaf juice, glycerin, fragrance from natural roses, hamamilis virginiana extract, rosa centifoila, which is just rose flower water, citric acid, citrus grandis, which is from grapefruit seed extract. So a lot of those things I have heard of, so this definitely is a more of like a natural formula. I just really recommend this. I cannot say enough good things about this. If you guys aren't super into rose petal, they do have an original formula and I believe they also do have cucumber and lavender if your skin likes something else like that but this and then other skincare products that I've been using lately I feel like have really been helping my skin if you guys want to see my recent skincare routine I just did a little chatty skincare video you could go check it out right here but definitely get yourself some Thayer's witch hazel and it will definitely change your skin game at least it did for me so I want to say it will for you too <laughs> next up I finished two sticks I guess you would say of my favorite deodorant. So this is the Degree Motion Sense Ultra Clear Black and White Invisible Solid in the scent Pure Clean. I've tried so many other deodorants and I know it sounds kind of gross but they all smelled like deodorant mixed with body odor. Like I didn't, I've never found a deodorant that works personally on me that was really able to mask it completely as well as keeping down the amount of sweat. I do sweat a lot. I'm a sweaty person. Like I said, just keeping it real. It is just so good. I love how it smells. This one just smells really fresh and clean. I feel like pure clean is like the perfect description for it. I just really love how it smells and I have repurchased this. It is the only deodorant that I will use from now on. So I used up two of my absolute favorite face washes. Again, the Bior Pore Unclogging Scrub. The bottles are a little a lot bent because I tried squeezing out whatever I could. I probably should have cut off the top, but I'm pretty sure I got most of the product out of here. So let me try to untwist this so maybe I could show you guys like what this looks like properly. So I was able to untwist this one a bit. This is what this one looks like. This leaves my skin feeling so clean, like it truly is purified, like it really got into all my pores. When I don't have this with me and I don't wash my face, I can't explain it. My skin just doesn't feel as nice and clean. I've gone through a ton of these. One thing that I actually didn't realize about this product until recently is that it does have 2% salicylic acid in there. So I didn't know that. I don't use it as an acne treatment. I really haven't had that issue in my skin recently, but I also don't feel like like this dries me out any extra or leaves my skin feeling stripped or dry or anything like that. So just be weary if you guys aren't into salicylic acid products, but I really do love this. It works for my skin. It makes it feel like nice and clean and purified and I have repurchased this again. The next thing that I see in here are a bunch of facial sprays that I'm going to talk to you guys about. I have a couple of different ones that I've used up. The first one that I pulled out is the Mario Badescu Skin Care Facial Spray with Aloe, Herbs, and Rose Water. I feel like I don't have to talk about this a lot. You 
you guys know that I absolutely love this. If you are looking for just an extra step in your skincare routine that really gives you that extra boost of hydration, my favorite way to use this is right after I do the Thayer's Witch Hazel. So I'll take the Witch Hazel on a cotton pad. Again, you guys can check it out in my last skincare video. Let that really soak into the skin because it feels nice and cooling. And then once that's all soaked in, I will go ahead, spray this on my face. This also says that you could use this to set your makeup. I've personally never tried this over makeup, but before makeup, this feels great or even on days where I'm not wearing any makeup or before bed and I just want a little bit more hydration. This is really great and this is also affordable. This is the four fluid ounces and it is $7, but I just bought the 12 fluid ounces and that retails for $14. So you get double the product for double the money. It's a really great product if you guys are looking for something just to add into your skincare routine. I really recommend it and like I said, it's great for all skin types. You guys know I've used up so many of these in the past. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I've used up maybe five of these I want to say now and I've been into this product for about three years. At this point, I go through these so fast. They are the, probably I look forward to doing this before I start my makeup again. It is just that refreshing, perfect little start to my day. But I also do feel like everything on my skin sits on top of this so nicely. I know a lot of people think that this primer water is a gimmick. I know it doesn't necessarily stand out or appeal to a lot of people, but in my personal experience and everything that I found with this. I find that my skin looks so much better when I'm wearing this under makeup opposed to when I'm not wearing this. I think it might be the glycerin. I just feel like everything sits so smoothly. My makeup really grabs onto the skin and I just love it. I've gone through so many of these and I have repurchased another one. And of course, I used up two MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus and I'm also actually almost done with a third one and another mini one. Honestly, you guys, this is so, so good. When I was a little bit younger, and more oily. I was always scared to use this. I didn't want anything that would necessarily melt the makeup off my face or make me look too dewy or too luminous or just make me look shiny in general. But when I finally bit the bullet and tested this out, I fell absolutely in love. I had such a different idea for Fix Plus than what it actually is. This is a makeup finisher. It's a makeup fixer. It's a skin refresher. When you put this on, this just melts all the powders into your skin so nicely. I definitely would say it it leaves your skin looking more of a natural finish and a little bit more lively, but by no means did this make me look greasy or too luminous or way too dewy. This is the perfect skin finisher. As far as making my makeup last longer, I don't necessarily think this does that. This isn't gonna give me the lasting power as like the Too Faced Hangover Spray or the Urban Decay All Nighter, but I find that this is so much more comfortable on the skin. Fix Plus is definitely where it's at for me. I've gone through two of them and working on a third one as well as a mini one right now and I definitely will continue to repurchase them. I actually got a pretty nice MAC gift card for Christmas and I'm kind of tempted why do I keep dropping stuff? And I'm kind of tempted just to spend the whole gift card in Fix Plus because why not? It's literally a godsend for me. It saved my makeup routine. All right, you guys, construction did just start up here. So I'm so sorry if you heard that. I thought they went on an hour break between 12 and one, but it is now 1235 and they started it up already. So I only had a half hour to film in silence, but I'm really sorry if you guys hear that or if it's a little disturbing, but I really want to finish the video. So hopefully you guys don't mind too much. But the next product that I pulled out of the bag is the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Pro Filter Primer. I loved this stuff. When this first launched with her foundation, I was using this like absolutely crazy. To me, this always made my skin look really lively and nice. It always felt like it gave a supple feel to my skin. It kind of had that like pinky pearlized finish that added a little bit of a luminosity. I did get a new bottle and I feel like the new bottle is more mattifying than this. So I don't know if they made it a little bit more mattifying or I don't know if they changed the formula a little bit, but I definitely remember enjoying the older bottle of this more than I do my new one. The new one isn't bad by any means, but it's just a little bit more mattifying than I remember this being. I think the component on this is so gorgeous. You guys know Fenty Beauty has some of the best and most beautiful luxurious packaging. I did love this. I went through this whole entire bottle. I was literally like 
that point where I was unscrewing it and like scraping the edges to get every little lost drop out of this because it is expensive. Like Fenty, as great as it is, the price point is definitely up there. I definitely don't know if I would repurchase it after I finished up that one. I just feel like I have other primers that I like more, but I feel like I wanna kinda see if I could mix it around and make it work because I do remember really loving this at one point, so maybe I just have to like use it with a more dewy foundation or something like that and then I will have more of a use for it again. So next up in my empties bag, I pulled out two foundations. One of them is my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless and the other one is the Maybelline Superstay. Maybelline makes my absolute favorite foundations, especially for drugstore price, these foundations are great. You guys know the Maybelline Superstay is my favorite foundation of all time. It like, despite it being drugstore i'm not saying it's good for the drugstore it is good for what it is it is way better than other high-end expensive foundations that i've tried and i feel like it's going to take a lot to top this for me this was an amazing foundation but it did last me a long time i want to say this lasted me close to a year and i finally used up the whole bottle and i did repurchase another one and then you guys know back in the day when i first started my channel i love the maybelline fit me matte and poreless foundation i still do really like this again it is a a little bit more matte than I like to wear my foundation nowadays. The Superstay has a little bit more of a natural satin finish, whereas this one dries down to pretty matte, almost looks a little bit powdery on the skin. Also, when comparing these coverage-wise, the Superstay is very full coverage, whereas I would say the Matte and Poreless is like a solid medium coverage. So I have repurchased this. I do go back to it when I want more of a matte finish or something with a little bit less coverage. But all in all, I really did love both of these foundations and they still are some of my favorites that the drugstore has to offer or even in general some of my favorite foundations that I've ever tried. Another Maybelline product that I finished up and I absolutely love is their loose finishing powder, their Fit Me powder in the shade 10 Fair Light. I know I've talked about this a bunch on my channel but comparing this to a high-end powder like the Laura Mercier, I found myself reaching for this so much more. This took me over a year to finish up with daily wear which I thought was crazy. It lasted me so long. You get a lot of product in here you get 20 grams of product. The powder is so finely milled, it is lightweight on the skin. Compared to something like the Laura Mercier, which it was really heavy duty, it almost felt a little heavy on the skin at the same time. This powder is so lightweight. If you have dry skin, I think you will enjoy this a lot more than the Laura Mercier. But even if you are combo to oily, this is a great baking powder because it is so finely milled. You could really easily pick it up with a sponge. I use this almost every single day in 2018 and I repurchased a new one for 2019 and I've been using it again every single day ever since. The next thing that I used up is a pack of lashes. You guys know I was never really huge on lashes, but these have been a really big hit for me lately. Strip lashes, I've kind of given up on. I wear them once in a while, but from now on, now that I discovered these, I definitely think these lashes are the way to go. So here is the empty pack, but you guys can see in the photos how they look. I look forward to wearing lashes now that I have these. I look forward to the ease of applying them. These are so easy to apply, and my favorite part is that you do not feel them on your eye. As someone who's worn strip lashes a bunch throughout the years, tried different like lengths and cutting them and trying different glues and stuff, I cannot get that inner corner to stay down for the life of me. I always find the inner corner popping up, stabbing me in my inner corner. I just cannot get strip lashes to remain comfortable on my eye. I could wear these for hours and hours and hours at a time and I do not feel like they're there whatsoever. And that is because you can be really like picky and choosy where you place them. So I'll usually do these come with different sizes so you get two rows of short ones and two rows of medium ones I will usually do three medium ones towards the outside of my eye and then on the inner corner of my eye I will do two small ones but it's all about the placement so I will make sure not to place it too close in the inner corner avoiding putting lashes on that inner corner while still looking evenly distributed and just beautiful and natural and wispy is all I could ever ask for in lashes. One thing that I am a little disappointed with is that these are hard to reuse because they are so tiny. I find that just by ripping them off, at least for me, I tend to kind of just rip them and then I can't use them again, but they aren't that expensive. One pack is $4.99, but I have found them a lot of the times for like buy one, get one half or something at my local drugstore. This is my Victor and Rolf flower 
Flower Bomb perfume. I'm pretty sure I got this for Christmas 2016 and it has been my absolute favorite perfume ever since. I remember trying this in one of those little samples that you can get from Sephora and I fell in love instantly and this has been the only scent that I've been wearing for the past two years. This is like my signature go-to scent. It is so warm. For being called Flower Bomb, I wouldn't say it's overwhelmingly floral. I don't see myself wearing something super floral and I wouldn't if it smelled too floral, if that makes any sense. But I love this. It's really warm. I'm pretty sure it has patchouli in there. I will pop the notes up here on the screen because I'm really bad at describing scents. But all in all, this is my favorite perfume. I have since gotten the bigger one for Christmas 2017. It is an amazing scent. Definitely my signature and I always get so many compliments on this. All right, you guys, we are almost done. We have reached the bottom of our bag. The next thing that I want to talk about is my mascara. I used up four of the same mascaras and one other one. So let's get on into these now. The one miscellaneous mascara that I had in here is from Kiko Milano, and this is their Luxurious Lashes Extra Volume Brush Mascara. This mascara was pretty good. I definitely wasn't 100% obsessed with this. If you guys see, this does have plastic bristles, which aren't necessarily my favorite anymore, and it is a little bit of a thicker brush. This definitely gave a lot of volume. I felt like the brush was a little bit too big for my liking, and the wand was also so really bendy. I would use this to kind of darken up my lashes. It was a very, very black and dark formula. So when I would be done with my mascara, I would just kind of go over these to darken it up. And that was my favorite use for this one. But I don't think I would repurchase. I believe this was gifted to me. And again, it did have its uses, but it wasn't my absolute favorite. And then as far as my favorite mascara goes, I used up four of them in the past year. I keep dropping stuff. This is the Maybelline Total Temptation. This mascara is so good. I've always had really picky, pesky lashes. I've gone through so many different mascaras. Nothing was cutting it for me until I tried the Total Temptation Mascara, I believe almost a year ago. Like I wanna say I tried this out like maybe a year ago, February or March. This is my baby, you guys. This mascara is so good. I don't have the longest, most amazing lashes, so maybe to some of you guys, my lashes don't look that great. But to me, this is the best that my lashes have ever, ever looked. I've gone through so many of them, and I love the blush pink and black packaging. Let me open one of them up and show you guys the wand. I think the wand is one of the biggest reasons why I do like this so much. The wand is a typical bristly type brush. It doesn't have those plastic bristles, and I feel like it's just like a traditional mascara shape and size it's not too big it's not too small it's not super skinny to where you feel like it's bending everywhere I just love this mascara so much I definitely don't see myself switching to another mascara anytime soon and I think I will definitely be sticking to the total temptation for now because it is amazing 2018 for me was definitely the year of finishing up concealers as well as trying new concealers concealers have become a big favorite of mine in my makeup routine and I love collecting different ones and trying different ones but the ones that I finished up in the past year are these four the first one that I have here is the Catrice liquid camouflage high coverage concealer this was a really great concealer I find that this had really nice coverage I loved the shade of this I wear it in the shade 00 light natural I don't like the scent of this concealer this is heavily scented like a perfume but I do feel like it did have very high coverage I felt like it was similar to Tarte Shape Tape it just wasn't as thick of a formula but I really had good coverage if you guys are looking for a good concealer. Next up, we have an oldie but a goodie. This is the Maybelline Better Skin Super Stay Concealer. I'm sure you guys remember me using this again when I first started my channel. I used to think that this was like full coverage, full glam, best concealer you could ever get. And now that I've tried other things, of course, now that I tend to compare everything to like Tarte Shape Tape or my Too Faced Born This Way, I don't think that this is very great coverage. I do think that this has like a light medium to medium buildable coverage. If you guys are looking for like an everyday kind of go to school, just do a little bit of correcting concealer, this is a really good one. The next concealer that I used up in the past year is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer, and I had this in the shade Light Ivory. I really did like this concealer. It is so inexpensive. Probably the cheapest concealer that I've ever purchased, and I want to say it is $2.99 or $3.99 around there, depending on where you get it from. This was a really great concealer for me at the time. Again, you 
You're not gonna get that full coverage glam look, but for an everyday medium buildable coverage, this was really nice. I did repurchase this, but I ended up returning it. Unfortunately, I felt like the second one that I tried of this just wasn't the same formula. I felt like it was a little bit greasy and slippery, especially when I would carve out my brows. I would I use the same brow products all the time. I truly love and trust my brow products. When I use this to carve out my brows, my brow products were literally like bleeding up into the concealer and I feel like it was because the newer formula of this to me just seems more greasy. I don't know if I'm going crazy. I don't know if I'm totally just wrong or I got a bad one or something, but I did end up returning the one that I repurchased because I just felt like it wasn't the same and I didn't love it as much as my original. And of course, the last concealer that I used up is my Tarte Shape Tape. This was my original one. I am working on my second one now, but this was my first ever tube of Tarte Shape Tape. I was so excited when I got this. I remember like I finally have the world's most famous concealer in my hands it was really great at the time unfortunately the shade was always a little too light for me and I didn't really realize it until I was close to the end of this so I probably walked around with my under eyes looking a little bit too bright for a while but this one is in the shade fair neutral but I do remember when I first got this they literally only had like eight shades or something like that now they have expanded the shade range greatly they have a great shade range I believe there are 30 shades and I've jumped down to light neutral and instead of fair neutral and that matches me a lot better. I love shape tape, a lot of people do here on YouTube. It's a great concealer and I feel like it's really set the standard for what I look for in a concealer nowadays. I'm sure this comes as no surprise to you guys. I finished up two of my ABH brow whizzes, one in the shade chocolate and one in the shade medium brown. I won't ramble on a lot about this. These are my favorite brow products ever. Anastasia killed it with the brow whiz and I love it. I haven't used this in a while when I did my brows because I do still have to repurchase it. I I have the shade medium brown in my collection, but my perfect shade is mixing the two. So I haven't gotten to use these because I haven't repurchased chocolate yet, but I definitely will be repurchasing it soon because it is my absolute favorite for my brows and I love them. Last but not least in my empties bag was a few lip products. So I finished up another one in my Rose Solve. You guys know I love this stuff. I talk about this, I feel like in every single video, but especially lately in this cold dry weather that we've been having here in New York, my lips have been so incredibly dry. And Rose Solve, you guys know, is the only thing that saves me. I want to say I've gone through, I don't know, like seven of these. I've got a lot of people in my life hooked on these. It's just a really, really great moisturizer for the lip. Way better than like Carmex or Chapstick or anything like that. And then I finished up my two favorite lip liners. The first one is the Wet n Wild Gel Lip Liner in Bare 2 Comment. A really awesome, creamy, affordable lip liner from the drugstore. And it is a really great peachy nude shade. And then the other one is the L'Oreal Paris Sharpenable Lip Liner in the shade 112 Mastermind. Again, a peachy nude, but a little bit more on the deep brown side than the Bare 2 Comment one. This one is a little bit more peach in comparison, but both of them are amazing. I pretty much was always able to use them interchangeably. I have a problem with peachy nudes and they are like the only colors that I usually wear on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, you guys, so those are all of my empties. That is absolutely everything that I used up this past year. I know it was a lot and I know it's probably a long video, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy seeing all of my empties and all of my beauty trash, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future uploads, click that notification bell down below and you'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and of course, I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.